to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor and the broken heart and new life. And for those who mourn, heaven's child is born. This is the gospel of Christ. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there are who go in by it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Jesus here made it abundantly clear that the road that leads to eternal destruction is a wide path and a broad gate, and many are going down that path. Well, who exactly is going down the path to destruction, and why is it? that God is going to send them to eternal destruction. Welcome to our study of who will God punish and why. It is true that God is a loving God. 1 John 4 verse 8, God is love. And it's true that God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4. In fact, the Bible says the Lord's not slow concerning His promises as some men count slowness, but but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is a God of love. He wants all men to be saved, and God doesn't want anyone to be lost or perish. However, God being a fair and a just judge, Genesis chapter 18, verse 25, it is also the case that God will punish some people out of His fairness and His righteousness. He must do exactly that. And so who will God punish and why will He punish those people? The Scriptures teach that God will punish those who do not know Him. That is, those who are not New Testament Christians. Listen to the words of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. And to give you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power when He comes in that day to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Paul makes it abundantly clear that part of those people, that group of people who are going to be punished are those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 25, when there was that great separation scene, the sheep from the goats, He said those who are going to be punished are those who do not know God. They will go away into everlasting destruction. And so when we think of those who one day are going to be lost, we've got to realize it's those who are not New Testament Christians, friend, how important it is that we obey the gospel and that we become children of God. God does want all of His children to live faithfully and to go to heaven, but to escape punishment. You've got to become a New Testament Christian. There's no other way. Jesus said, or Peter said in Acts 4 verse 12, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Christians are the only ones who have their sins washed in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 1 verses 3 and 4. They are the only ones who have had their sins forgiven. Acts 2 verse 38, when Peter preached the gospel, he preached, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. And so if you're not a New Testament Christian, you are in that class of people who will one day suffer eternal torment. But then, as you notice, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, there's two classes of people, those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Those who don't know God are those who have never entered into a relationship with Him. Those who do not obey the gospel doesn't just include initially obeying the gospel, but it is a continual idea. Those who don't live faithful to the gospel every day, not only 
Well, those who've never become Christians suffer punishment, but wayward children of God will also be punished in that day. Listen to what Paul said to Christians in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12. Paul said, Let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. It is the case that Christians must be vigilant, that we must make sure that we're living like we ought to, for if we're not careful, we can fall. You know, some people have taught the idea that once you become a child of God, you can never be lost. Once saved, always saved. That's just not what the Bible teaches. In fact, in Galatians 5 and verse 4, Paul said, you Christians writing to the church in Galatia, Paul said, you who attempt to be justified by law, you have become severed from grace. Listen, you have fallen from grace. You've fallen out of Christ. They cannot be right with God if they don't stay faithful. Now let me give you an example. Acts chapter 8, Simon the sorcerer, he hears the word of God preached, and in verses 12 and 13, he also is baptized. He obeys the gospel and becomes a Christian. But he reverts back to his old way very quickly. He sees that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the power of the Holy Spirit is given, and he says, I'll give you money if you'll give me that power also. And here's what Peter says, your money perish with you. You thought the gift of God would be purchased with money. You've got neither part nor portion in this matter. Your heart's not right with God. Peter said you need to repent and pray to God if the evil thought of your heart might be forgiven you. But what's significant is Peter said your money, listen, is going to perish with you. Who is in that class of people who will be punished? Christians who live in sin. Friend, there is nothing more repulsive to God than a child of His who goes back into the world. It's disgusting in God's eyes. How do we know that? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. Here's the, the grotesque image God chooses to think of when a child of His goes back. It's like a dog returning to its own vomit or a sow having washed returning to its wallowing in the mire. What a filthy and disgusting image that is. That's how God feels when one of His children who's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, who's been sanctified and made holy, turns back to the world. And so a child of God can so sin as to be lost, and if they remain in that sin, they will be a part of that group who one day is going to be punished. Well, we also know that God is going to punish all the disobedient throughout the ages. In that final day, all those throughout the ages who've lived in disobedience will be punished. I want you to notice what the Scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. The Apostle Paul says, "...casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and notice, and being ready, Jesus is ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. On that final day, when all men stand before the bar of God and give an account, those who've lived in disobedience will be punished. They'll hear that horrific statement, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. They'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so this reminds us of the need to obey God. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, It's not everybody that, that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. It's not just enough to name a name. You've got to do what God says. Luke 6, 46, as Jesus thought about the Pharisees and their hypocrisy, Jesus asked them this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? can't just call Him Lord. You've got to do what He says. You've got to obey Him. Jesus said, If you love me, if you say you love me, keep. My commandments, John 14, 15. He is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. And so there is a dire need to make sure that I am living obediently to God and to His cause. Well, who else is going to be punished by God? The Scriptures teach that all the wayward angels who did not submit to God, who left their proper domain or authority, are also going to be punished on that day. Listen to the words of Jude in verses 6. Jude in verses 6. Scripture says, 
And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he, God, has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of that great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality, gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, notice, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God created these angels, their ministering spirits, the Bible tells us, but some of them rose up against God, didn't remain in their proper authority, under proper authority, and God says those angels on the final day are also going to be punished. What's the practical lesson for us? Friend, I'm not listening for a voice from an angel. I'm not infatuated with the idea of angels. I know they were God's servants, but the Bible teaches us, even if we, Paul said, or an angel from heaven preached to you any other gospel than that we've preached, let him be a curse. Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9. We don't worship angels. I'm not waiting to hear a message from an angel. In fact, angels can and have disobeyed in God in the past, and thus, we've got to listen to the Word of God. Our message today is found in the Bible. Hebrews 1 verse 1, God who at various times and various ways spoke in time past of the fathers by the prophets, notice, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. I'm listening today to the Word of Jesus. John 12, 48, Jesus said, He who rejects me does not receive my word, has that which judges him. The word that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. I'm going to be judged by the Word of God, and so don't be infatuated so much with angels and listening for a message. Some of them are going to be punished because they did not obey God. Well, who else will be punished? The Bible teaches that enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ will be punished by God on the last day. Notice Paul's words in Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Paul said... For many walk, of whom I told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. What about the end, enemies of the cross? Their end also is going to be eternal destruction. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, who would we identify as an enemy of the cross? Anyone who promotes anything other than the simplicity of Christ and His doctrine is an enemy of the cross. False teachers are enemies of the cross. They have itching ears. The Bible says they'll heap up for themselves teachers after their own desires, and they'll draw many away. That's why we've got to preach the Word. 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 4. The Bible teaches that those who don't know God and those who do not acknowledge Him as God are also enemies of the cross. Atheists are enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ. Remember, the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. You can know there's a God. You can look around and see. And so those who claim not to believe in God, they're enemies of the cross. Agnosticism and agnostics are enemies of the cross. The agnostic is someone who really is not sure and doesn't know whether you can know or not. Might be a God, might not be a God. Who really knows? We'll just live the best life and hope for the best in the end. That's not the mindset Jesus promoted. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Ungodly, immoral people who live in debauchery and sin, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. They trample anew the Son of God. Hebrews 10, verses 26 through 29. But then there's another class. The Bible teaches those who are worldly, that is, those whose mindset and goals and hope is set on this world, they're going to be punished in the last day. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14 again teaches us, most of this world is going down the wrong path that leads to destruction. And this world that we live in right now, although there are many beauties created by God, this world is temporary and we must we must not put our hope on this old world. Listen to what Peter said as he thought about the end of all things in 2 Peter 3, beginning in verse 9. The Scripture says, The Lord is not slack 
concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Notice, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be destroyed, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. What's going to happen to this old world? Jesus had already said it, Matthew 24, verses 34 through 36, the earth and all that's in it will one day burn up, will pass away, will cease to exist. But he who does the will of God, that's the person who will live forever. And thus we must not put our hope on this world. James 4 and verse 4 uses very strong language to describe worldliness. James says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore makes himself a friend of the world has become God's enemy. You can't have both. Jesus said you cannot love God and mammon or earthly riches. Matthew 6 verse 24. The command is do not love the world or the things of the world. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 and God's saying that. Not just because he despises the world which has gone after Satan and his devices, but because he wants to warn us not to get caught up in that trap. Well, who else is going to be punished on the last day? The Bible also teaches that great enemy of old, Satan himself, is going to be punished in everlasting fire on the last day. Look at Matthew chapter 25, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse 41. The scripture reads in Matthew 25, 41, Then he, Jesus, will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire. Notice, prepared for the devil and his angels. Revelation 20 is a great separation scene again. And that old serpent, that dragon of old, is cast into the bottomless pit full of fire and brimstone. Again, a picture of Satan and his eternal destruction. Friend, if we follow the devices of Satan, if we give our heart to his things, to his teaching, to his worldliness, then we're going to go where Satan himself will spend eternity. It's not that much fun to follow the devil when you think about the end result. Too many times we get caught up in the here and now and the impulse and the immediacy of the fun when we lose sight of the fact. The devil has already lost. You're on the losing side if you follow Satan and you will be punished forever. The Bible also teaches that the unjust of this world will be punished by the Father. People who don't deal righteously, people who cheat and lie and deceive and steal, these swindlers, the Ponzi scheme people of this world, those who try to trick people and be great con artists, the unjust will also, those people, will also be punished if they don't change their ways. Notice the words of 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible reads, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. Here we're clearly taught that people who are not fair, people who are not just and righteous in their standards, in their judgments, will not go to heaven on the final day. And so judges, those who run businesses, those who are in places of authority, how we need to strive to make sure that we have just standards, that we follow the teaching of God. Another class of people the Bible teaches that one day will be punished are the immoral of this world. From the time of Genesis all the way up to today, the world has had a, those of the world have run immorally. They follow the path of immorality and ungodliness, and we've got to make sure if we're going to be saved, we avoid immorality. Now, I want you to notice what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Listen to these words. The scripture says, Do you not know 
that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, nor will what? Nor will they inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. It's clear from this text that those who live in immorality will not make it to heaven. Notice the people mentioned. Adulterers, those who take other spouses. Fornicators, those who live in sexual immorality before marriage. And notice especially those who do not hold to God's standard of marriage. God's standard is a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Genesis 2.24. One man, one woman for life. And yet, look at what the text says. Homosexuals and sodomites will not inherit the kingdom of God. Friend, the homosexual agenda is oftentimes being pushed down our throat. Like it's something that everybody ought to accept. And if you don't accept it, you're like a racist. Friend, that's not at all a fair comparison. Listen very carefully. The Bible says in no uncertain terms, homosexuals will not go to heaven. That's what God says. That's how clear it is. They will not, if they continue in that lifestyle, inherit the kingdom of God. And so immorality, thieves, murderers, extortioners, those are people who one day, sadly, will suffer eternal punishment if they don't change. Now, one more class that we want to look at of people who will be punished if they don't change, and that is all the complainers and grumblers of this old world will be punished on the final day. Notice what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 10. The Scripture says, Nor complain, as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. He's talking about the Israelites who throughout the, the, the traveling from Egypt to the promised land, they began to complain and murmur. They saw the miracles. They received the food from heaven. And yet, how did they show God their thanks? What did you do? Bring us out here to kill us, they said. Oh, that we were back by the flesh pots in Israel. We're tired of this manna. And when God gave them something different, they began to complain again. God despises those who are not thankful. Too many times, instead of being humbly grateful, we're grumbly hateful. Are we really doing God right if we complain and murmur and speak against God in a way that's not pleasing to Him, in a way that dishonors all that He's done for us? And so we've got to make sure and not complain or murmur. The Bible says this, Philippians 2, verse 14 and 15, Scripture says... Do all things, listen to that, all things without murmuring and complaining. At times that's hard. It's hard for each of us because sometimes our human nature takes over and we want to complain, we want to grumble a little bit. That's not God, what God wants us to do. God says in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. First Thessalonians 7, chapter 5, verse 17 through verse 21. And so let's be careful to make sure that we're not in this class of people who's one day going to be destroyed. Well, you might be thinking to yourself, what is it then? What is it then that I need to do to make sure I'm not one of these people who's going to be destroyed? You first of all need to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the only way. Are you sure today that you're a child of God? How do you become a Christian? Friend, the Bible makes it abundantly clear. To become a child of God, you have to hear God's Word. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Once you've recognized the message of God, the, the truth of the Bible, once you've accepted that message, then you must believe in Jesus. Jesus said in John 8, 24, Unless you believe that I am He, you will surely die in your sins. I've got to believe Jesus is the Savior of the world, but having believed, I can't stop there. I've got to make that life change known as repentance. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, 
you'll all likewise perish. I've got to change my way of thinking and change my way of acting to God's way of thinking and God's way of acting, God's way of living. And then I've got to make that good confession. In Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, Jesus said, in essence, if you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before the Father who is in heaven. If you will confess me before men, I'll also confess you before the Father who is in heaven. I've got to say, like the Ethiopian eunuch did, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 through 38. And then the Bible teaches to be in that class of people who's one day going to live in heaven you must be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins. In Acts chapter 22, verse 16, we have Paul's own accounting of his salvation experience. In Acts chapter 9, the Lord told him, Now you go in the city, and it will be told you what you must do. We turn to Acts 22, verse 16, and the Bible says, Ananias speaking to Saul, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Listen and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. And then once you've obeyed the gospel, you've got to live faithfully every day. Romans 6 and verse 4, the Bible teaches us, we come up out of the waters of baptism to walk in newness of life. You're a new creature. You've got a second chance. If anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All is new. I'm getting a second chance. And with that, the Bible says, we must live faithful. Jesus said, be faithful unto death and I'll give you the crown of life. You've got to seek first God's kingdom above all else. Seek first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, verse 33. Make it your life's aim and goal to glorify God in everything that you say and do. So friend, we ask you today, of those two classes, those who are going down the wide way that leads to destruction and those on the narrow road that leads to heaven, which class are you in? Are you sure you're on the right path to heaven? If not, we encourage you today, obey the gospel, become a child of God, live faithfully so that one day you can know for sure I've got a home in heaven with all the redeemed of the ages. Won't you do that before it's too late? You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, radio, and internet. Our motto is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.